Welcome back to the Bible Channel. Today for our hands-on review, we're reviewing the 1599 Geneva Bible. This is the Patriots edition by, I believe you pronounce it, Eckert or Tolly Ledge Press. I've seen editions of the 1599 they put out where it's just the, the, the Geneva Bible. Then I've seen this one, the Patriot edition. I'll explain why this is called that in a while. And I've also seen one, the uh, Luther edition, the Martin Luther. And it has a picture of Martin Luther who um, influenced the Protestant Reformation. And I'm thinking about getting that for my Protestant friend Rick. I think he'd really appreciate it. But for me, or my mom, she calls this the George Washington Bible. And this is allegedly the Bible that George Washington used was the 1599 Geneva Bible. So for the cover, there he is kneeling in prayer for a battle like he always did. Um, and this is a rather thinner volume compared to this big thing here, this thickness wise, you can see the difference there. This uh, cut out what's called the Apocrypha books that, I don't know your opinion on them, but that might influence you on whether to get this one or to get this one. But if the Apocrypha books don't really mean much to you, this is the way to go. And also what I like about this Patriot Edition Bible compared to this one is that this is an redone, the text is done in modern type where the letters are changed to how we know them now. See, it's modern print, they, but it still is the 1599 Geneva. Uh, and no weird spelling, all the spelling also is how we know it today. So, if you look, it's double column, and then in the middle, will be, those are really fine font, but footnotes. And then at the bottom, they put all the um, commentary. So below that line is all the commentary on all of the um, verses. So that's how it's laid out. I And another reason I got this one is, remember this, this one itself is in the Old English, so if I couldn't figure out what in the heck it was saying, I could turn to this one, because they read the same, pretty much. I mean, there's a more, little bit more addition in the 1599 one. So it's cool. The Patriot Bible. Another thing I didn't point out about the Geneva Bible, both of these, is that it was the first English Bible free from the limitation of Rome and the crown of England. So the Patriot Bible, this one, sold itself on being a Bible of the people, by the people, and for the people. Because again, there was no influence of Rome or England. <clears throat> and it was the footnotes, supposedly, is, is what caused um, King James to not like the Geneva Bible. It, it, it's the, um, where the Hebrew women, I think this is the verse. So here, let's check it out. Verse 15. We're in education, Exodus chapter 1, verse 15. It says, Moreover, the king of Egypt commanded the midwives of the Hebrew women, which or of which the one's name was Shiprara, and the name of the other, Pua, and said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew, women of the Hebrews, and see them on their stools, if it be a son, ye shall kill him, but if it be a daughter, then let her live. Notwithstanding the midwives feared God, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but preserved the children alive. Alright, so that's verse 18. Let's read verse 19 too. But the midwives answered Pharaoh, 
because the Hebrew women are not as the women of Egypt, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come. So that little one, let's look at the footnote here. The bottom, for verse 19, it says, Their disobedience herein was lawful, but their disassembling evil. So here it permitted these women from disobeying Pharaoh, and supposedly that's what caused King James to not like the Geneva Bible itself because of the footnote, because he viewed it as a threat to his, the divine right of kings. So, I like it. Like I said, modern text reads a lot like the King James Version. If you're a big fan of the King James Version, you'll, you'll appreciate this Geneva. All right, so let's turn to Revelation. All right, just to show you that it pretty much reads like the King James that we know today. The revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things that must shortly be done, which he sent and showed by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things that are written for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches, so, so see it reads a lot like uh, the King James Bible that we all are familiar with. So that's the last book, Revelation, but I put a tab in all the extra features in this Patriot Edition Bible. So the first is we got form of prayer to be used in private houses and meetings. And speaking of prayer, at the beginning of this Bible, there was it's supposedly the prayer that George Washington prayed. It's got history on the Bible. This uh, Bible is much lighter than that 1560 brick. Here it is. The prayer of George Washington. Now, ah, what the hell? Let's read it. Why not? O eternal and everlasting God, I presume to present myself this morning before thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to accept of my humble hearty thanks that it hath pleased thy great goodness to keep and preserve me the night past from all the dangers poor mortals are subject to, and has given me sweet, pleasant sleep, whereby I find my body refreshed and comforted for performing the duties of this day, in which I beseech thee to defend me from all perils of body and soul. Direct my thoughts, words, and work. Wash away my sins in the immaculate blood of the Lamb, and purge my heart of thy, excuse me, and purge my heart by thy Holy Spirit from the dross of my natural corruption, that I may with more freedom of mind and liberty of will serve thee, the everlasting God, in righteousness and holiness this day and all the days of my life. Increase my faith in the sweet promises of the gospel. Give me repentance from dead works. Pardon my wanderings and direct my thoughts unto thyself, the God of my salvation. Teach me how to live in thy fear, labor in thy service, and ever to run in the the ways of thy commandments. Make me always watchful over my heart, that neither the terror of conscience, the loathing of holy duties, the love of sin, nor an unwillingness to depart this life may cast me into spiritual slumber. But daily frame me more and more in the likeness of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that, in thy, that living in thy fear and dying in thy favor, I may in thy appointed time attain the resurrection of the just unto eternal life. Bless my family, friends, and kindred. Unite us in all, er, in, yeah, in all praising and glorifying thee in all our works begun, continued and ended, when we shall come to make our last account before the blessed Savior who hath taught us thus to pray our Father. So there's a George Washington prayer. In the back you got prayers for evening and morning. There's a lot of bonuses in this Bible. Then you got 
the glossary just so the word that today doesn't really no one uses that but it'll give you the meaning because again this Bible cleaned it up the text but it kept the same words and meanings or words so it has a good glossary to explain those um, things and then this is what I like about this Bible it has the Magna Carta in it it also has the Mayflower Compact and then on the next page has right here the Declaration of Independence and I think that's awesome that the Declaration of Independence is right in the Bible alright but there's a lot more right here we got the Articles of Confederation right in the Bible and then whoop, one of the pages stuck right here right in this uh, Patriot edition is the Constitution of the United States and that's one of the main reasons I bought this Bible is because I figured the Constitution's in, in a Bible I'll be more likely to read it uh, the Constitution is, thing, is a thing all of us Christians need to study a lot more especially in these days so you got all the constitutions laid out then you got the amendments here let's read a few of these amendments to the Constitution so again as you can see the the font the text is very clear and uh, not hard on the eyes to read alright so amendment one Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redre redress of grievances second amendment that's what we know is freedom of speech but it includes also freedom of religion you can believe whatever the heck you want you can be as wrong as you'd like that's the beauty of free speech amendment two a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed amendment three no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner nor in time of war but in a manner to be prescribed by the law so again this one lists out all the amendments all right, and then next we have the rules of civility and decent behavior in company and conversation George Washington sometime before age 16 transcribed rules of civility and decent behavior in company and conversation all right so it's a list of like common sense thing we can't really say that because it ain't common anymore but politeness uh, being courteous being a, a decent human being George Washington lists out how many are there there we go that's the last one hundred and ten what is it labor to keep alive in your breast that little spark of celestial fire called conscience alright so then, then next we have George Washington's secular to the states and then finally in this Patriot edition we have George Washington's prayer for the United States of America so let's I think it would be appropriate to uh, here let's get the quote from the back of the book too it's every officer and man should live and act as becomes a Christian soldier defending the dearest rights and liberties of his country President George Washington alright so here's prayer George Washington's prayer for the United States of America so I think it'd be appropriate to close this video by reading this prayer as well so this prayer appeared on a plaque in St. Paul's Chapel in New York City as well as the Pohick Church Fairfax County Virginia 
where Washington was a vestryman from 1762 to 1784. We make our earnest prayer that thou wilt keep the United States in thy holy protection, and thou wilt incline the heart of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of stub subordination and obedience to government, and entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens of the United States at large, and particularly for their brethren who have served the field. And finally, that thou wilt most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, and to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion, and without a humble imitation of whose example in these things we can never hope to be a happy nation." Grant our supplication, we beseech thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. George Washington. All right, and then the last part. And now, Almighty Father, if it is thy holy will that we shall obtain a place and name among the nations of the earth, grant that we may now, or we may be enabled to show our gratitude, thy goodness, by our endeavors to fear and obey thee. Bless us with thy wisdom in our counsel, success in battle, and let our victories be tempered with humility. Endow us with, endow also our enemies with enlightened minds, that they become sensible in their injustice and willing to restore the liberty and our liberty and peace. Grant the petition of thy servant for the sake of whom thou hast called Thy beloved Son, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. George Washington. Well, I'd like to point out, George, that God can't bless America when they legalize and sin. But this has been the review of the 1599 Patriot Edition Geneva Bible. Hope you've enjoyed and learned more about the early English Bibles.